Yeah, I just wanted to sort of give a brief, um, I guess, walkthrough of, of active dashboards. As Dave mentioned, it was uh, in their in their latest release um, that was brought out at the start of this year. Um, and for those that don't know uh, or aren't aware, Adaptive do um, have scheduled releases, usually two to three per year, and they do provide some good uh, notes on each release if you are that way inclined and wanting to get sort of on top of the latest, you know, tips and tricks and releases that Adaptive uh, have to offer, um, you can visit uh, the release notes by going into the Adaptive Knowledge Center. So that's just this question mark in the top right of your screen. You're probably going to see this in most places in Adaptive. Uh, I'm just at the, the normal home screen at the moment. If I go into Knowledge Center here, I'm able to just see this what's new link in the top left there. And I have my releases link and I can have a pretty good look at what's been going on, not only in the last couple, but I could go back to um, pretty much when I first started looking at uh, and using adaptive really at, at 2017 and, and around that time. So a um, pretty good idea to have a look at this area and just see what's what's available to you at each scheduled release. I'll probably be touching on these two main ones here. Um, active dashboards, that concept is certainly the main focus point. But even before that, I think in this 2019.3, there was also some notable changes to um, dashboards in adaptive. So if I were to sort of cast my mind back to maybe, you know, six to eight months ago, the dashboarding functionality, the entire module was actually known as discovery. Um, so that sat down here as sort of a separate tool that in my mind and in my sort of experience was sort of an untapped feature. It was something that looked pretty cool in, in demos and presentations, but when it came down to uh, product implementation, it was sort of an afterthought or a nice to have feature that came at the end um, and by that time of the end of the, the the project life it never really got off the ground in a lot of the cases so um, I think and obviously my experience is quite a small sample size but I think that adaptive sort of took that um, what was happening and tried to I guess pivot their investment and their efforts into the dashboarding module so that really began uh, as I said, into this 2019.3 release with a couple of new changes. Um, the most obvious one is the actual name change itself from Discovery, which isn't very intuitive um, to dashboards. Uh, and then a couple other features after that. So if I'm in my dashboards area here, there's a couple of features that I just wanted to, to show you that, are, that may seem small, but are actually, you know, at the time were pretty significant and, and sort of foreshadowed a greater investment into this area. So the main uh, feature I wanted to sort of touch on here um, was just the idea of a snapshot. Now this request, this feature was uh, often asked about in a lot of um, implementations and at the time it was just a flat, no, you can't do it. Um, but for a lot of reporting tools like Cognos, for example, the idea of having a snapshot and being able to burst it out automatically as an email was really commonplace um, and so adaptive was sort of you know a bit behind that area so they released this idea of being able to distribute uh, this view as a pdf to uh, other users um, so if i set up a, a new snapshot schedule the settings here are really intuitive really easy to follow um, i can add people um, that are using adaptive add users to this this two box to actually send it to people, the CEO and the CFO, for example, um, and set up some frequencies, some time that it gets distributed and some notes. Yeah, as I said, these settings are really easy to use, really easy to maintain, you know, to be you know, a computer whiz or anything like that to, to set this up um, and burst it out to anyone you need to see. So a little, a little feature that at the time I thought, yeah, gee, this could be um, something greater uh, down the track. And that turned out to be the case in this next release uh, that was earlier this year um, with the case of active dashboards. And so the idea of active dashboards is really just the ability to add in a sheet um, to the dashboard. So right now I've got just visualizations in this screen here, um, but the idea of active dashboards, bringing a sheet to allow you to, 
uh, input values um, and change values, adjust values, and see the changes in the visualization form automatically, um, which really brought dashboards to the planning process. I don't think prior to this, dashboards really solidified its place in the planning process because um, you already had your sheets for your input, you had um, your web reports for your ad hoc analysis and you had your Office Connect for your board reports. The idea of dashboards, it, it didn't really fit per se, but this new feature of the active dashboard really brought it to the forefront. The, the implication of this was that you could really bring it into the budgeting process as a step-by-step -step functionality. Um, and so what I wanted to show you guys was just an example of that. If I'm back in my, my dashboard view, um, I wanna show you just this particular dashboard here, I've got pretty much every tab that I need to do my budget. I'm able to set out instructions, adding in text was also another feature that they only just released uh, recently, able to provide a bit more context and step-by-step -step process to using dashboards. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned before, the idea of bringing in sheets to a dashboard screen. So whilst this is loading, you'll be able to see here, this is just the product revenue sheet. If I go into my sheets area here, it's literally just a cut and paste. Of this sheet here, they've brought it out as a widget and you're able to be inputting um, some data there. So I'll show you how that looks now, if I go into a particular level, if this is more of a product revenue, so I'm, I'm going to pretend that I'm a sales person. I'm going to type in Melbourne to bring in my sales Melbourne. And I've got some white cells that I can input. And it gives me some also instructions there, again, just some further context on, on what I'm supposed to do, being adjusting unit sales and gross margin. Um, and if I were looking at this sheet, I mean, there's a lot of calculations in here that, that take up a bit of clutter. Um, so if you bear with me for a sec, I might just change the dimensions in here just to change the view a little bit. If I want to see just, you know, my products, my customers, and that way I can just pick one single account. And in this case, my main driver here is my units. Um, that way I can just sort of reduce the clutter and only display what I need to see. I've still got my headline numbers that I can refer back to. I've got this um, trend analysis here against prior year and I've got my target there to still to see. Um, but as far as the input goes, I can just see my units just focus on what I need to do. So if I wanted to say adjust product A1 units, I can highlight all these cells, for example right click adjust and I want to say, yep, we're going to be increasing this by 30%. Select percent, give me my 30. And now I've adjusted all of them in one hit with that 30%. I want to hit save here. Notice this product mix as well with this product mix sort of graph here. Um, just giving me a bit of an idea of how that looks. Um, that's increased from 50% up to 52% as an example. Um, obviously, because I've increased product A1. Uh, I could also do it on like a, a time base because I know I've got this trend graph here um, and it seemed to be a bit cyclical, um, peaking in every sort of the end of each quarter essentially. But if I said, you look, October, I know I did originally budget for a drop uh, in sales, um, but I don't think that's going to happen this time around. I could go down to a particular product. I might even pick a different category and go product B and say, yep, that's 600 in October, that's now 1200. I can break that back proportionally. I can do the same with this one as well. It's also now 1200. I can break it back to keep my mix of customers the same as what it was. Um, these numbers are blue as well. So I kind of need to save it just to make sure it's entered, but just keep your eye on this green bar here as well, just this October number. If I save that, I'm able to get instant feedback on that impact. This green bar has shot up significantly. My sales target is almost where I need to be, very close to the 100%. Um, just provides that really easy feedback um, of what you're doing as opposed to just seeing this sheet and seeing a whole bunch of numbers. 
um, if your budget contributors are more visual, your salespeople are more visual, which they often are, um, this is really handy uh, to really see how they how they're doing and keep them focused on their their role. Um, if it's target based, if it's trend based, you really keep it focused into what they need to see. Um, so that's on the on the revenue side, but you can also do it on the expense side as well. So you've got a workforce sheet as well where you can adjust um, your labour force and you also see I've got my, my payroll sheet brought in as, as a widget. I can also have travel as well, which is under these uh, unprecedented times, it's certainly a, um, a topic of discussion um, with the travel ban being pretty much in, in place for the last few months now. So the um, adjustments that we had uh, or that, that we made at the start of the year, we might need to actually cut that back. So we can do things like adjusting the trips and adjusting for postponements. So if we had trips that were say in April here, we know for a fact that we were uh, actually, in fact, this, this travel is not gonna happen. The, the travel ban's in place. We can actually push this back. Um, so this annual conference occurring, and you can see this travel date here of April. We might want to push that to a later date, to November, let's say. And so this quite significant bar in April, once I save this sheet, sort of gets transferred across to November, as you see here. And now underneath our target. And in fact, if we're seeing, you know, no travel um, in, in April at all, we can sort by, by travel date, locate our April trips, and in fact, our May trips, and just remove them or adjust them for, for postponements and things like that. So I can also move this annual conference down to November as well. and really see that I'm covering my bases visually. I now know that I have no travel in April because of the travel ban. I can easily explain it. I can easily see that my impacts, my changes are actually making a difference to um, this overall trend here. So I guess this gives you a really brief uh, walkthrough of active dashboards and how you can bring the dashboarding I guess, module into the planning process. Um, we can set up different tabs for all your different sheets and have a more, I guess, interactive um, way of planning as opposed to just using the sheet. So I hope you enjoyed the idea of da uh, active dashboards. And again, if you have any questions, as I mentioned at the start, the release notes are really detailed. They give you a lot of information on, on what's going to be in the active dashboard, some FAQs and things like that, and also some interactive videos as well. So that's definitely a good resource to get more info, or you can also ask us as well for any other um, questions that you might have. So yeah, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed guys. Yeah, excellent, Troy. Thanks, thanks for that. We, we did have a good, good question, which we might just, just cover off briefly. We had a, a question saying that um, they can, you can see this happening and helping a lot in the budgeting process. Mm -hmm. um, is this template available for everyone? Um, and, or do we have to sort of start from scratch? This template, yeah, good question. So the, all these sheets are model specific, so I can't exactly provide you a template and say, here's your, here's your sheets, um, but rest assured that the process is, is quite easy. Um, if I'm in my, and if you have, so any sort of you know, basic understanding of, of building a dashboard, it will come fairly intuitively, but even if you don't, it's really easy to follow. I'm in, I'm just gonna jump into edit mode just quickly, just to show you. Um, just bunches of, of time, if, in terms of actually doing the demonstration, we might come back to that. If we've yeah, got sure. time, we can certainly um, show you how to add it in, but if you're already, using dashboards it's it's not an extra uh, leap to no 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 it can just be an extra add-on an extra widget that you add to your existing uh perspectives